Hey, everyone. Welcome to the show. I have some really interesting updates to share about Russia's war in Ukraine and the fallout from Putin's failures and his recent announcement. So as you guys have probably heard by now, Putin announced that he's essentially drafting 300,000 men to fight in this unnecessary and cruel war. Then news broke that Putin had actually signed in secret a law to send 1 million more men to Ukraine. So when pressed on the details, the Kremlin actually did admit that, yeah, that 1 million figure is a long-term plan, and but the immediate plan is to call up the 300,000. And it's only going to be people who've already served, um, people of the right age and so forth. So reports have been breaking that one-way flights out of Russia are sold out. Vehicles are backed up for miles with men trying to flee the country. Wait times at the Georgian border were supposedly more than 12 hours, and some are resorting to very desperate measures. So per the Daily Beast, a 38-year-old man was caught this week. He was attempting to paddleboard into Estonia this was on the Narva River. Um, unfortunately, they caught him and they sent him back to Russia. But it's also being reported that the wealthy are paying as much as 27,000 US dollars per seat on private jets. Uh, they're just trying to avoid being drafted. They're getting the hell out of Dodge. So according to the Guardian News outlet, passengers are paying between 20 to 25,000 euros for one-way flights, and this is mostly to Armenia, Turkey, and Azerbaijan. The director of one charter jet company that they spoke with said that they were getting about 50 requests per day. This was prior to Putin's announcement. After his draft announcement, it's now approximately 5,000 requests per day. And he told The Guardian that they started to charter commercial planes, like the larger planes, to try to meet this increased demand. And they wanted to lower the cost for people who aren't wealthy. Well, they can't find enough seats. They have so much demand that there's just not enough room for everyone who wants to get out. And even when they can, even on these larger commercial flights, the seats on those types of planes can still cost more than $3,000, US dollars. Adding to the shortage, by the way, are the sanctions that were imposed by the EU and the UK. So those sanctions prohibited the leasing or insurance of aircraft used within Russia. Um, in addition, they say that there's companies like full-on organizations, co you know, corporate entities chartering entire planes to fly all of their male employees out of the country. So there's 10 EU countries now that have closed their borders to Russian travelers. The latest to make the announcement was Finland. Uh, but Germany is still saying, no, Russians are welcome. They're welcome in our country. The interior minister for Germany told the press, quote, anyone who courageously opposes Putin's regime and thereby falls into great danger can file for asylum on the grounds of political persecution. However, it's now being widely speculated that the Kremlin is going to order the closing of their own borders to keep people in. So we'll see where that goes. Um, there's a human rights group that's saying that some men are already being kept in against their will. They said that there have been men that have already been stopped at the border and turned away by Russian border guards, and they're citing Putin's new mobilization order. Um, yet the Guardian is saying that they have evidence that a very prominent official escorted his son to an airport to make sure that he could leave, and he sent him to Istanbul. Evidently, his son sent a Snapchat story to a group of his contacts, and he wrote, quote, the great escape. So working class and poor Russians are the ones who are going to be forced to sacrifice their sons, their brothers, their fathers, their husbands, you know, but the wealthy get a pass. Um, and of course, protests continue, as do the arrests of the protesters. 
last count was upwards of 1,500 people who were arrested simply for voicing their opposition to the war. And a 25-year-old man was taken into custody this week. He shot up a Siberian recruitment office and he critically wounded an official inside the building. And that's just one of the many attacks on recruitment offices lately. The mother of this gunman said that his best friend had been drafted, even though he had never served in the army. And here's the thing. Here's why this is not looking good for Russia. Many of those who they've been drafting to fight haven't been in the military for quite some time. Um, or some of them, like with this man's friend, have never served in the military at all. And the Kremlin said, oh, we're going to train these people. So you would expect, oh, they're going to spend months in training at minimum, right? Well, newly drafted soldiers are telling Russian media now, quote, we were officially told that there would be no preparation before being sent to the war zone. The official commanders of the regiment confirm this information. We are to be sent to Kherson on the 29th. So they're just being drafted now. They're being sent to the front lines, basically, within days. And as we've seen, so many of these men don't want to fight anyway. They don't understand why they're even there. And they certainly don't want to die for Putin's ego-driven abject failure. The thing is, too, think about how many people they've already lost who were top military brass. These were people who were trained. These are people who have seen action on the battlefield. They've already gone through all of their military training. They knew what they were doing. They knew how to handle weapons. And they're failing. They're losing horribly. So how, how good is this going to go with this new draft of people who have no clue what they're doing, have probably never held a weapon in their life? I will let you know when I hear more. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Take care and I'll talk with you soon.